This lecture is going to cover different medical prefixes, roots, and suffixes. These are very important. You'll see them throughout the semester. So aside from just learning them for the time being, really make sure you commit them to memory because it's going to help you out a lot along the way. As I said before, that there are many common prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Um, these are very helpful because they make a lot of the terms universal. For instance, if I say osteocyte, osteo is the root for bone, site means cell, so if you can interpret that word and break it apart, you understand that it's a bone cell. All right? So it can really help determine the meaning and just help with overall understanding. Okay, we're going to start with prefixes. Prefixes, of course, occur at the beginning of a word. Um, the first example here is ab. Um, an example word for that might be abduction. So if a child is abducted, they're taken away or carried away from their parents, their home, whatever the case may be. Um, ad is the next one, such as adduction, right? And this means to carry or move towards. If you've ever been to a gym, there's sometimes a machine you can get on where you squeeze your legs kind of in together. You're sitting down, but you bring your legs in together to each other. That's working out your adductor muscles, right? Ab adduction, bringing together. Endo, such as endoscopy, right? That's to visualize or see within something. Hydro, maybe to hydrate, right? If you want to hydrate yourself, you drink a bunch of water, right? Water. Micro, such as a microscope, right? something you use to visualize very small things. Neo, meaning new, such as neonatal. Um, that's where all the newborn babies are in a hospital in the neonatal area. And the last prefix on the slide is peri, meaning around. Um, the first thing that I think of is perimeter, right, which is the distance around something, like the perimeter of a square is the sum of the length of all of the sides, right, distance around, or the perimeter of Atlanta, 285, right, the big highway that runs around Atlanta. All right, this slide contains more prefixes. First one is omni, meaning all, um, such as the word omnipotent, meaning all powerful. Next one is trans, across. So if you transport something, right, you carry it across, or transportation, right? It's the act of moving across something. Hyper, of course, the first word most people think of is hyperactive, right? Meaning above normal in activity. Mal, meaning bad. If you speak Spanish, it's actually kind of useful because the Spanish word for bad is mal. Um, and it means, uh, an example would be malicious, maybe. Right? Meaning bad intentions or negative intentions. You do something maliciously. Anti, as against, such as anti-abortion. Right? Against abortion. Poly, meaning many. Um, polycystic, for example, some people might have polycystic tumors or something along those lines, meaning many cysts, right? Um, and then myo, meaning muscle, so an example word of that is myofibrils or muscle fibers. Now we're moving on to roots. These are sort of the meat of words, right? And the first one we're going to go over is nephro. This means kidney. An example of that might be nephritis, which is just an infection of the kidney. Um, hepato, meaning liver. Hepatitis is the first thing that comes to mind, which again is just a disease of or infection of the liver. Um, and don't forget, you can actually get hepatitis vaccinations now, so not a bad thing to get. The next two, pulmo and cardio. Um, pulmo meaning lung and cardio meaning heart, but I have a good example word that kind of ties them both in together. Cardiopulmonary, right, which means pertaining to the heart and the lung. But sometimes you can do exercises that are geared towards cardiopulmonary systems, right? It gets both your lungs and heart working. Actually, most exercise would do that now, wouldn't it? Cyto meaning cell. I believe at the beginning of the lecture I mentioned osteocyte, which is a bone cell. 
And then I have two roots here that actually mean nose, rhino and naso. And sometimes that can happen. I put them both on there just as an example that not there's not always one word or one root that means the one thing. Um, so an example of a word with rhino would be rhinoplasty, which is essentially a nose job. And an example of a word with naso would be nasal. Um, for example, somebody who talks to their through their nose has maybe has a nasal voice, right, because of that. All right, continuing on with roots, the next one is ped, meaning foot. Um, an example of that would be pedicure, right, when you go get your toenails painted and all that good stuff at a spa. Digi, meaning fingers or toes, right, so you can count on your digits, right, some people count on their fingers, counting on their digits. Man, meaning hand. Again, going back to the pedicure for foot, you can get a manicure on your hands, right? Get your nails, fingernails painted and all of that. Derm, meaning skin. An example of that would be epidermis, the outer top layer of your skin that's visible. Costo, meaning rib. You can have intercostal muscles, and right? those are the muscles located within or in between your ribs. Carp, meaning wrist. Um, oftentimes people who type all day long or use the computer a lot suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, right? And that's a problem within their wrists. And the last one on the slide is cervic, meaning neck. And an example of this would be your cervical vertebrae, right? The vertebrae that are in within your neck. The final three roots that we're covering are arthro, meaning joint, such as arthritis, right, a disease of the joints and the hands and feet often, but other joints as well. Vena, meaning vein, um, the main vein that leads into your right atria is the vena cava. And the final one, gastro, meaning stomach. Um, and a good example word for that is gastrointestinal pains, right? We've all had stomach problems, upset stomachs, things along those lines. A lot of times that's referred to as gastrointestinal um, issues. All right, finally we're going to be covering suffixes. Of course, suffixes are things that come or occur at the end of a word, right? And the first one is ACE, which means enzyme. Um, we'll be covering a variety of enzymes, and we'll really go into detail with them later. But an example would be amylase. Right, that's just a type of enzyme. Um, oma, meaning tumor. Right, so a melanoma is a tumor on the skin, type of skin cancer. Um, genesis, meaning beginning. And oftentimes, um, if you've grown up in a church, you might think, oh, okay, Genesis is the first book in the Bible, right, which might help you remember beginning. Um, but this is actually where the term genetics and things like that come from. And so, because it's the beginning of life, right? Your genes, who you are. Oid, meaning like. So if something is a humanoid, right? It's human-like, so you might have a humanoid robot. Itis, meaning inflammation. We've actually given some exam example words like this, um, such as hepatitis, right? Inflammation, infection of the liver. Philia, meaning love of, right? So if you're hydrophilia, you have a love of water. And then, of course, phobia most people are familiar with. right? Some people have arachnophobia or fear of arachnids. And that kind of wraps up this lecture. Goodbye.